So here's a, a little example with five child boxes. We have one, one, one for the height, width, and length for all of them. We'll give it a bit of a line thickness. The height, width, and length of the entire parent that we're creating is one, nine, and four, but each individual box as a child object will have a height, width, and length of one, one, one. So you'll see that each child has width of the box width, height is the box height, length is the box length. Display controls, we're giving some color. So color scarlet, color red, orange, color green lime, and so on. That's how we specify color with display controls. Display controls is a P list, so it's just a list with a keyword and a value. Color is one of the keywords. The value can be a color name, which is also a keyword. Here we have an example of the left front. So it's type is box. The display controls specify a color. The length, width, height are the box width, box length, and box height as we defined above. But now the center, this is the key input. The center is translate the center. And when we say the center here, we mean the center in the parent, in the current object that we're defining now. And that center will default to 0, 0, 0. Translate that center left by half of the width of the overall parent and front by half the length. Left by half the width, front by half the length. That gives us the left front box. And similarly, we have a left rear with just a little bit different translation rule. So left by half the width, rear by half the length. Then middle, we don't translate at all. So that ends up at 0, 0, 0. Now right rear, same thing, except now we translate the center right by half the width and rear by half the length. And if we were to render those boxes, you would see five boxes like this. There's the middle one that didn't move at all. And we went half the length, half the width over to get to this one, half the length this way, half the width over to get to this one, and so on. Now the alignment operator is the key function that we use to orient things. The alignment operator produces a three by three matrix, which you can use to specify an orientation. Now, can you compute a matrix by yourself? Sure you can, but normally it's easier simply to use the alignment operator. So alignment will take up to three direction keywords and three vectors. So for example, here we have a box and we want to tilt the box. So you see the black or the gray is the box in the original location. We're going to take its top, the top face of that box, and we want to align it with a different vector. Instead of aligning it with the global face normal vector top, we're going to use rotate vector D and rotate that top vector about the face normal vector rear. So the hinge, if you will, is the face normal vector rear that's running out this way, and this box will pivot or rotate about the face normal vector rear by 45 degrees. And that's the result that you see here. We're aligning the top face with this vector, the vector that results from rotate vector D, the face normal vector top 45 degrees about the face normal vector rear. And just to be safe, we lock in the rear face, which is this face back here. We lock that in still with the face normal vector rear. That doesn't change. That stays the face normal vector rear. It's just the top face that we want to rotate. And of course, when we rotate it by the top face, this left face automatically comes around for the ride because it has to. Let's play around with some of these functions and look at this tilted monolith. So let's just go to the command line. We'll do rotate vector D. And we see here with slime, the mini buffer shows you the arguments. So you can see the arguments are vector, degrees, and normal. So let's start with the right vector. So that would be manually make vector 100. Zero, zero. That's pointing in the X direction. Because again, the first position here is X and then Y and then Z. So that's a vector pointing straight in the right direction. Let's rotate him by say 45 degrees about make vector 010. Zero, zero. So that's the rear facing or the Y facing vector. And there's our answer. So it's pointing still partly in the positive X direction, not at all in the positive front direction because we rotated about that axis. And it's going a little bit negative in the Z direction. Because of the right hand rule, you can imagine your thumb pointing along the hinge or the pivot vector. Just make vector 0, 1, 0. And then your four fingers of your right hand will go in the direction of rotation. So that's negative. If we rotated it using the front vector as the hinge, we would go in a positive direction. So now we end up with a positive positive 0 0.700. Now let's look at this actual example, the tilted monolith. Here's the tilted monolith, and we'll go ahead and compile that. So here's the original monolith, and let's make this a little bigger. And here's the tilted one. You can see superimposed on top of it. So there it is with the front view. I have to make this a bit smaller, so now we can see the different views. So we have trimetric, there's a rear view, a left view, and normally you see things in trimetric. So let's take a look at our exercise now. You want to, first of all, make a twisty tower of boxes. So boxes stacked on top of each other where each one has a little more twist. And secondly, a traditional brick wall with alternating rows shifted by one half brick width and flush sides.